Thank you for joining us uh, at this press conference. Um, my name is Tony Consul. I'm the Director of Communications. Really privileged um, and honoured, um, certainly on behalf of the Air Transport Action Group. I'm concerned in asking the Commission to review its policy, um, let's say, global agreement. Governments uh, congregating in, in Moscow a couple of weeks ago. We all have unique IP that we're going to keep, we're going to hold, but what we develop together is going to be the benefit of the industry. Subtle signs of subtle changes. Um, the bigger issues we talk about in my side of the industry is how we're going to get the money to keep up with the demand. harmonized not just the air navigation service providers. Now, is it, I'm, oh sorry oh sorry I can see There's a lot that governments uh, needs, needs to do and it's not at all primarily about spending money or subsidies as uh, some people uh, say. First of all it's about the proper regulatory uh, environment, political uh, environment. Certain developments like uh, biofuels certainly need also let's say incentivization. That can be a regulatory form, it can be through R&D money uh, etc. I'd like to see governments also, particularly those governments who put taxes on the airline industry, passenger taxes, other taxes, to reinvest that money at least into R&D to, to strengthen the uh, development towards a sustainable uh, aviation industry. And on ETS, I said already, I mean, uh, I, would, I would hope that the European Commission, the national governments here in Europe, uh, don't continue to head down the wrong path because that path will only result in reduction of jobs, reduction of trade, reduction of travel, and it will not save any emissions. You know, certainly we compete with Airbus, but we also cooperate. And I think this is an area where, where both Airbus and the Boeing company you know, understand what the issues are that we both face. And working together with Embraer and with others in the industry, I think we can make a significant impact on the environment, uh, we're going to work together on biofuels. We think that is the future. We think that's one of the enablers uh, to improve the environmental footprint of aviation. I don't think what we signed today is wind addressing at all. If you look at this industry over the last 50 years, we've been able to reduce the environmental footprint by about 70 percent. We need to continue to do that, and we think biofuels is going to be a very important part of that. 
Well, the industry is meeting its 1.5% per annum efficiency targets at the, right now at the moment. That's the first goal. Um, of course, turning to carbon neutral growth from the year 2020 onwards is going to be challenging, but we're talking about how we're going to do that. We're on track for that. And eventually, of course, we're going to, we've got a very challenging target of hitting only 50% of emissions at 2005 level by the year 2050. And that's a very challenging one, but I'm confident that technology will, will um, come to our help there and we'll be able to deliver that one as well. We need a positive and we need a, a, a lot of goodwill um, among the, the members of ICAO. The problem is that the European unilateral scheme is at the moment rather spoiling the atmosphere and uh, we do need Europe, I think, to, to do something to take the heat out of the situation at the moment. We're calling on the world's governments to recognise the strategic importance, the strategic asset that aviation is as a catalyst for world trade and to assist the industry in every way that it can to enable us to continue uh, to deliver those services in the most efficient and environmentally friendly way possible. We've launched a report today called Aviation Benefits Beyond Borders and it clearly demonstrates the value of aviation that it brings around the world. 56.6 million jobs directly and indirectly involved in aviation, 2.2 trillion US dollars in GDP. From this summit, I think there are two key outcomes. Firstly, it's a rallying cry to the industry to continue the efforts that we're making um, on the environmental side, but also a rallying cry that we have a, a very important role to play in providing air transport services around the world as a key catalyst for the world economy, trade and tourism. The second outcome is a call on governments to recognise the strategic asset that aviation and air transport uh, plays um, and therefore to provide the support, not in terms of incentives, but to provide the policy frameworks, the harmonised approaches that we need around the world to help the industry to continue to deliver those services efficiently, effectively and sustainably. Carbon pricing would have to be progressive, yet foreseeable, in order to allow the industry to plan over long time horizons. There are, of course, important caveats, including that aviation's burden should not be proportionate to that of other economic sectors. Aviation cannot become the cash cow of the climate change regime. Also, Chairperson, to avoid double counting and double taxing of emissions. Such a global scheme should replace the current patchwork of unilateral emissions trading and green, green or so-called green taxation schemes that are spreading like wildfire in Europe. Take, for example, uh, the United King, uh, Kingdom's APD. What started off as a green tax has now become a peer revenue raising mechanism. Its green credentials are long gone. The tax started off at a low level, but it is now a substantial tax on international tourism. And for those of us in the developing world that depend on ecotourism, it is a tax on our green services exports. So let me conclude with a firm proposal. If the EU is committed to a global solution, which I believe they are, and if the rest of the world is seriously committed to providing a new political momentum to negotiations under ICAO, which I believe they are, there may be very good reason for the EU to suspend the inclusion of aviation in the EU ETS for two years. I believe the European Union should go the extra mile and give the negotiating parties in ICAO, that's all of us, a fair chance to conclude negotiations on a global, global sectoral emissions trading scheme. 